Hello, I'm Nancy Marshall, an Associate Director at Wellesley Centers for Women. I want to talk about the foundations of our work at the centers, and I don't mean the buildings. From the beginning, when Barbara Newell, President of Wellesley College, spoke about the new center, it's been about the people. And about the work that we do. At the heart of our work is an understanding of the intersectionality of gender, race, social class, and sexuality. I'd like to share some of our current work and some of the foundations of that work. I can't cover everything, but want to give you a sense of who we are and what we do. Carolyn Elliott was the founding director of the Center for Research on Women in 1974, one of the sister centers that later formed the Wellesley Centers for Women. Employment was part of the original mission of CRW. In the 1980s, projects in this area included women in non-traditional blue-collar jobs and a conference on the economic conditions of black women. We have continued work on employment with studies of work and health, discrimination, work and family issues, and current work on family policies and women's labor market careers. Our early work also addressed issues in education. The National Seeking Educational Equity and Diversity, or SEED, project on inclusive curriculum was founded in 1986. It continues strong today with a $2.9 million grant to document the archives of the SEED project and create a website of resources. The Women's Review of Books began publishing in 1983 and has brought us into the 21st century with a blog about women's books, politics, and life. In 1992, How Schools Shortchange Girls was published, sparking a national conversation on gender equity in the schools. This work continues at the centers in several ways, including recent work on STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. The School Age Child Care Project, now known as NIOST, or the National Institute on Out of School Time, came to CRW in 1979. NIOST addresses issues of policy and practice in out of school programs and out of school time. The most recent work includes the adoption of NIOST standards for healthy eating by the National After School Association. Our work on early child care began with a child care affordability study in 1986, followed by the cost and quality studies, the NICHD study of early child care, and current work in Boston on early childhood programs. In 1976, Jean Baker Miller published Towards a New Psychology of Women, which revolutionized mental health theory and practice. In 1981, Jean was the founding director of the Stone Center, one of the sister centers that combined to form Wellesley Centers for Women. The Stone Center Theory Group developed what is now known as relational cultural theory, which continues to inform clinical practice at the Stone Center and beyond through the Jean Baker Miller Training Institute, founded in 1995. Our work on social-emotional well-being also includes Open Circle, which was founded in 1987, and a recent grant of $1.3 million for a study of a web-based depression prevention initiative. At the centers, our work on the life course has addressed issues of gender as well as race, ethnicity, and social class. In 1996, the first edition of Urban Girls included an article on diversity in girls' experiences, and 11 years later, the second edition included new research from the centers on girls and physical activity. Other work has considered Latino youth, girls and sexuality, and a recent project on diversity and identity. The life course also includes older adults, and includes work by Ruth Jacobs on outrageous older women, as well as work on older workers, and a recent project on same-sex marriage. In 1992, growing out of the publication of How Schools Shortchanged Girls, the Sexual Harassment in the Schools Project was launched. Other early projects on gender violence included a longitudinal study of family violence in military families. In 2004, the centers organized an international conference on innovations in understanding violence against women. Our work in this area has also included the Battered Women's Testimony Project in 2002 and ongoing work on domestic violence in the courts. The centers were represented at the celebration of the 17th anniversary of the Violence Against Women Act in 2011. While much of our work focuses on domestic issues, the centers have, from the beginning, brought global perspectives to bear. In June 1976, the centers held the International Conference on Women in Development, one of the first such events, which was attended by over 500 people. 
Since then, we have incorporated global perspectives in all areas of our work. In 2011, the centers organized the Rabat Roundtable on Women Leading Change in the Arab and Muslim World. That's a brief overview of our foundations and our future directions for our work. So when people ask you, what does WCW do, you can tell them all of that. Or you can simply say, we are change makers.